Guys, welcome back to Southern Extreme TV. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on my channel. Today, we are going to be doing a first impression review of the Christensen Arms 300 Winchester Magnum Ridgeline Rifle. Carbon fiber, you gotta love it, guys. So, with that being said, I'll show you guys for all you neat freaks and, and gun freaks out there, we are empty, nothing in the magazine. Um, we are clear and safe to talk about this bad A rifle. We are talking today about the Christensen Arms Ridgeline, and I went with a 300 Winchester Magnum uh, for the simple fact that I have probably too many 308s. I don't know if that's a if that's a saying that you can actually use. Too many 308s, but I only had one other 300 Winchester Magnum, um, and I actually gave that rifle to my dad. Um, so I figure, what not? better way to get back into the 300 Win Mag game than going with a carbon fiber lightweight gun. Um, out of the box, I want to talk about a couple of the features that I really like about this rifle, a couple features that um, I, I would change or maybe do something a little different for. Um, so let's talk about the fit, um, the feel, the finish, just right out of the box. Obviously, you're paying for a very high-end gun. Um, there's nothing about this gun on any aspect of it that I have found that showed a, a flaw or a blemish or anything that would make me think that there was, um, I, I guess, an overlooked area in the manufacturing of this firearm. Everything fits good, everything feels good, everything is smooth and functions really, really well. The fiberglass barrel was absolutely perfect. No, no nicks, no dings, um, anything like that. So everything was really, really thought through in this specific rifle when it was built. Um, the action is super smooth. You know, for it to be a long action, I'm used to a short action on a 308 platform. I love the 308. I love that shorter action. Um, but this longer action, I was a little nervous about how smooth it was going to be. Um, but man, I was really impressed with the action that they did on this on this firearm right here. Um, obviously, you've got the stainless steel uh, muzzle brake and the stainless steel finish here, which is really nice. They do make several different versions of this gun where you can get a burnt bronze um, color or finish as well. They also make the stock in black and green. Now, this is actually their one of their older models. I bought the gun brand new, but it was their older model because they now have new line of, or basically new rifles that uh, produce a different color stock, still a carbon fiber barrel, a lot of the features are very, very similar. The, the main difference is in the stock. And that's one of the negatives that I want to talk about. And I think that Christensen Arms addressed it in these newer models, which I have not had a chance to review yet. But in this model here specifically, um, they took the weight into consideration a lot more so than the fit and the finish and the feel of this stock. This is a very simplistic style stock. As you can see here, it's very streamlined. Um, it, it's made to pack in and carry long distances and to be very comfortable packing. Now, notice that I said very comfortable packing. I am not a fan of, and I need to I need to go back in time a little bit because as I have started my gun collection over over time, I have grown accustomed to a more vertical piece, a more vertical foregrip um, for my hand to rest on. I spent a lot of time behind an AR-15. I spent a lot of time behind an AR-style rifle, and that more vertical feel right here makes um, makes the rifle fit for me a lot better than this more streamlined horizontal style grip. One thing that I may look at doing here in the next uh, little while is actually upgrading this stock to a different a different style. Don't know exactly what name brand, don't exactly know what style, uh, but I know I want something that has a little more vertical feel to it versus this this real streamlined look. So that's the one one negative out of the box that I noticed uh, kind of offhand, just off shoulder in the gun and comparing it to some of the other nicer guns that I have, um, some of which you guys have not seen yet. The other negative that I want to talk about um, 
is the size of the bolt knob. Um, as you can see here, hopefully you can see, this bolt knob is a lot larger. If you guys have been doing research on these Christensen Arms rifles, this is a lot larger than what you're going to see from the factory. Um, this is actually an upgraded larger knob. The, the one that comes from the factory uh, looks very similar to this, has the same kind of same kind of contour to it, except it's about the a quarter of the size. Um, it is very, very, very small. Again, the whole idea behind this rifle was to be able to pack it in and carry it long distances and cut down weight. That was the whole sole purpose and design behind this rifle. And they were taking every little detail into consideration to try to cut down weight and trimming weight down off that knob was one of the things that they did to, to cut down on ounces. Um, what was the old saying? Ounces equal pounds, pounds equal pain. Um, they, were trying to, they were trying to accommodate for that. Um, but in my opinion, I would rather in the heat of the moment be able to reach up there, grab a larger bolt, throw that action back, get me another round in the chamber and get a good follow-up shot in a very quick, high-intensity situation. So I went ahead and upgraded that um, before I did the review. I thought that was something that I really wanted you guys to see um, before I did the video. And I really wanted to try it out as well just to make sure that it was going to look good with the gun and that it was going to function uh, well with the gun also. Um, that's pretty much it as far as negatives, guys. Um, again, the stock, I'm just not a fan of, of this style. The bolt, I thought, the bolt knob, I thought was a little bit small. Other than that, this gun shoots really, really well. Now, with the carbon fiber barrels from Christensen Arms, you do need to go through their break-in process. So I'm in the middle of my break-in process for this firearm right now. Um, I've currently got about 40 rounds through it. And I can tell a difference in <clears throat> the first initial groupings that I started um, to, to shoot with this gun where I was shooting above MOA. And everything that you read on these firearms, especially with the 300 Win Mag from Christensen, it says that you really got to be methodical and following that break-in process. So I don't want to show any of, the, any of the groupings that I've got right now because this gun is not fully broken in yet. Um, so I wanted to kind of get the gun get used to how it felt, put a couple shots down the range, and then give you guys that initial um, first impression review of, of what I thought about it. Um, and then I'll do another follow-up video for you guys once I get this thing broke in and once I figure out um, if there's anything else that I like about it, don't like about it, um, so on and so forth. Um, I went ahead, just so you guys know about the optics, I went ahead and topped this thing with an Athlon optics. This is the uh, Midas BTR Gen 2. So this is a really cool scope. It's a 4.5 by 27 with a 50 millimeter objective lens. Um, it has an illuminated reticle and it has uh, zero stop capabilities. It's a super nice scope, super clear scope. But what I really liked about it is it was very streamlined. So obviously, again, we're talking about a gun that you're wanting to backpack in or you're wanting to carry on long distances. And I didn't want this ginormous, heavy, built to be run over by a tank scope even though this scope is made very very well and it's not going to break and it doesn't feel cheap um, it's just it has a more streamlined look which i thought would fit the contour of this rifle really well and obviously you can tell right here that this scope fits perfectly onto this firearm i mean just beautifully you gotta love the way that that thing looks and the glass is super clear um so i won't dive too much into the scope just because i know you guys are here for the gun review but initial impressions guys i think the gun was absolutely worth the money i think that if you are budget oriented um, and you're looking for a do-it-all type of gun i think you can very easily and affordably go with a christensen arms rifle um, as far as the caliber goes i think the caliber you leave up to your situation and what you're going to be hunting for are you going to be using this deer for or are you going to be using this gun for deer you know antelope what is your main species are you going to have the opportunity to go hunt bigger game uh, you know grizzly bear uh, moose elk uh, large mule deer are you going to be taking far shots i think all of that needs to be considered into your purchase and i think this is a very reasonable gun uh, for a one-stop shop if you will to really figure out how it shoots, develop a load for it, develop a, a, a round that the gun really, really likes, and take that gun and do 
any and everything across the country that you want to do. Um, and in my personal opinion, the 300 Winchester Magnum arguably could be that round for you. 300 Win Mag has the capabilities of shooting very long range distances, um, carrying a lot of kinetic energy at those long range targets. Um, the ammunition is readily available. You can typically find 300 Win Mag at, at Walmart, Bass Pro, Cabela's, pretty much any mom and pop gun shop is gonna have some type of box of 300 Win Mag. Um, so it's, it's a gun that if you are wanting to just add to your collection, you can very easily do. If it's a gun that you're wanting to buy and, and make a one-time purchase and, and have it be a do-all gun, I think it fits that caliber as well. Um, do I think that there could potentially be better um, custom rifles on the market? I think the answer to that is yes. But I think that also comes with a price tag difference as well. Um, I think this firearm here, uh, you can actually find, if you shop around, you can actually find this gun for right above that $1,000 price tag. Um, I think you can even find it right below 2000 I think it's around $1,499, I believe is what I found this rifle right here for. Um, I can't tell you where I found it at because YouTube frowns upon that for whatever reason, but if you do your homework and do some shopping and looking around, you can find the carbon fiber Christensen arm rifles for definitely below $1,500, bucks. The, the older versions, not the newer ones. The newer ones, they're pretty, they're pretty set on uh, a pretty pretty chunk of a price tag so um do some shopping you can find this gun I, to my knowledge nothing changed with the barrels that christensen arm is making i think the only thing that changed on the newer version versus this has a lot to do with the style stocks that they have um, i'll have to do some more research on that but from just my initial lookings that is the only thing that has changed um, I'm super excited to basically dive into this gun here in the next near future and really figure out how it shoots, um, and especially once I get the barrel broke in, I think that's going to help me out a lot, um, especially in the 300 Win Mag uh, realm. Um, so, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with me on my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed my first initial impressions of the Christensen Arm Ridgeline. 300 Winchester Magnum with the Athlon scope on top of it. It's a lightweight package. Before I go, I do want to weigh this thing. I want you guys to see exactly how much it weighs. I said I was going to do that and I almost got through the video and forgot. So show you guys here that it is empty. Show you guys the old handy dandy trusty scale is zeroed out. And we are going to put this thing on the scales and see what it comes to. Looks like nine, right at nine pounds. So nine one, I believe is where we're at. Yep. So I hope you guys can see that fairly decent. So now the good thing about that is that is a nine pound rifle that has a scope um, and a bag on the back as well. Now, obviously you don't have ammunition in this gun because ammunition is going to add a couple ounces to it, but you're below 10 pounds, which is huge in my opinion, to be able to shoot a larger Magnum rifle and still be below 10 pounds. Um, and you're still able to mitigate the kickback with a lighter rifle because of the threaded muzzle brake that they have on the end of this gun. So that's one really, really neat thing um, that I think they took into consideration was creating a light gun that is made to backpack and does not absolutely stomp you in the dirt whenever you pull the trigger. So with that being said, guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. It means the absolute world to me. Um, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I am trying to grow this channel uh, to 100,000 subs. So every click will get me one step closer it means the world see you guys next time